Welcome to Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement, Process Redesign, Lecture D. The objective for this lecture is to use knowledge of common software functionality and meaningful use objectives to inform a process improvement for a given clinic scenario. The topics covered in this Lecture D, Process Improvement, include objectives, skills, and knowledge for process improvement matching common clinic system functionality to solve process problems or optimize existing clinical processes. Process improvement for meaningful use. The Medicare and Medicaid EHR incentive programs provide a financial incentive for the meaningful use, MU, of certified EHR technology to achieve health and efficiency goals. By putting into action and meaningfully using an EHR system, Providers will reap benefits beyond financial incentives, such as reduction in errors, availability of records and data, reminders and alerts, clinical decision support, and e-prescribing refill automation. CMS EHR Meaningful Use Overview, ND, Paragraph 1. Meaningful use has the same goals as process improvement in healthcare, improving quality and safety of care, enhancing the patient's care experience, decreasing the cost of care, and making clinic processes more efficient. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS website, quoted and listed on the slide, provides resources with more information about meaningful use, as well as a CMS EHR Meaningful Use Criteria Summary and Meaningful Use Objectives. Meaningful use is being rolled out in stages. Stage 1 began in 2011, continued through 2012 and 2013, and established baseline criteria for electronic data capture and information sharing within and between the Electronic Health Records, or EHR. Stage 2 started in 2014, and then in October 2015, program requirements were streamlined, resulting in a modified Stage 2 version. Modified Stage 2 is applicable for reporting years 2015, 2016, and 2017. Stage 3 begins as early as 2017 as optional, but is required in 2018. As the stages progress, the goals expand on Stage 1 baseline by leveraging health IT to focus use of certified EHR technology to support health information exchange and interoperability advance quality measurement, and maximize clinical effectiveness and efficiencies. Thus, meaningful use and process improvement are linked. The specification sheets outline the criteria an eligible professional or eligible hospital must meet to achieve meaningful use. Links to the table of contents and specification sheets are available on the next slide. From the Table of Contents, clicking on the link for each objective opens the actual specification sheet for each objective. For each objective, the specification sheet contains a statement of the objective, detailed specification of the measure for the objective, exclusions for the objective, if any exist, pertinent definitions, additional information, and frequently asked questions. The links on the Meaningful Use Table of Contents allow you to view the detailed specification sheet for each objective. As described on the CMS Electronic Health Record Incentive Program website, there are two sets of objectives. One for eligible professionals, EPs, and another set for eligible hospitals. For EPs, there are 10 objectives. For eligible hospitals and CAHs, there are nine objectives. We will cover the Meaningful Use Modified Stage 2 objectives for eligible professionals, because these are most relevant to outpatient clinic settings. Upon review of both sets of objectives, you will notice all but one objective overlap between the objectives for eligible professionals and those for hospital and CAH settings. It is important to note that many of the criteria impact clinical workflow. The initial Stage 1 criteria achieved their intended benefit through changing processes for the better, through automation or through controls to catch or prevent errors. 
while subsequent stages further support and advance these processes. We will go through each criteria that impacts workflow and discuss for each how achieving the meaningful use criteria will impact workflow analysis and process improvement. This unit specifically outlines objectives 1 through 10 of meaningful use. The first objective is to ensure that health information created or maintained by the CEHRT is protected. The measure for Objective 1 states that to attest to the objective, the practice must have undertaken a formal risk management process, i.e., conducted or reviewed the results of a security risk analysis of their systems according to 45 CFR 164.308 A1 and must have implemented security updates as necessary and corrected identified security deficiencies. The objective ultimately requires organizations to complete an annual security risk assessment, which was already part of compliance with requirements under Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA. Protecting health information can impact workflow in many ways. First, controlled access to health information will require physical security i.e. lockable doors, maybe badge access, and situating screens where they are viewable by the patient being treated and not viewable by others. Many technical controls on EHR systems may include use of an identifying token to log on to the system or use of a user ID and password. Thus, providers and staff will have to log on to the system. Further security measures, such as session timeouts for periods of inactivity, may require providers and staff to lock workstations or to log back in after timeout. Other managerial workflow impacts may include processes for setting up new accounts on the system and for removing access when providers and staff leave the organization. If not considered and planned with other workflow changes, security measures can impede providers, staff, and patient access to information in a timely manner. The Clinical Decision Support Objective requires use of decision support tools within the CEHRT to improve performance and improve outcomes for high-priority health conditions, such as diabetes or asthma. The objective also requires use of drug-to-drug -drug or drug-to-allergy interaction checks. Decision support tools, such as best practice alerts, provide targeted guidance at various points during the encounter. Further, the decision support logic should run and trigger any alerts before action is to be taken on the order. Preferably, the alerts would occur while the clinician is on the order entry screen within a few seconds of order submission, or as part of an order preview or screening process prior to actual submission or finalization of the order. This gives the clinician the opportunity to make changes immediately and while they are working with the patient and have the case current in their mind. The next objective requires computerized provider order entry for medication, laboratory, and radiology orders. The orders are directly entered by any licensed healthcare professional who could exercise clinical judgment in the case that the entry generates any alerts about possible interactions or other clinical decision support aids. There are two ways in which this objective impacts workflow. The first is that the role entering the order is determined by state, local, and professional guideline, i.e., a qualified clinician who can take clinical action based on any system-generated decision support. For example, alerts for contraindictions or drug-drug interactions. The second way in which the objective impacts clinical workflow is the task sequence. The order must be entered before action can be taken on the order. This is again because of the benefit of CPOE, just like clinical decision support, comes from the use of the computer system to scan the accessible health data for the patient and available knowledge bases. For example, lists of contraindictions and interactions for potential problems. Thus, process improvement should assure that CPOE is implemented to meet these two stipulations. Eligible Provider Objective 4, 4, generate and transmit permissible prescriptions electronically 
changes the workflow of the existing task of writing prescriptions, including new scripts for refills and responding to pharmacy questions. These prescribing-related tasks are performed in clinics everywhere, but use of an EHR system to automate the routing of electronic prescriptions and prescription-related doctor-pharmacist communication drastically change the task. Instead of handwriting a prescription, the provider will enter the information into their EHR, along with the address or other identifying information for the patient's pharmacy. The system, through a network of intermediaries, transmits the prescription to the pharmacy system where it is received electronically and can be submitted to the insurance company and ultimately filled. This e-prescribing workflow had to be incorporated into the existing clinic workflow and should be represented on flow diagrams. Objective 5, 5, states that the EP who transitions their patient to another setting of care or provider of care or refers their patient to another provider of care, provides a summary care record for each transition of care or referral via Health Information Exchange. CMS defines the transition of care as the movement of a patient from one setting of care, hospital, ambulatory primary care practice, ambulatory, specialty care practice, long-term care, home health, rehabilitation facility, to another. At a minimum, this includes all transitions of care and referrals that are ordered by the EP. When clinicians place orders for a referral, they can specify the receiving provider and location. Summary of care documentation is then sent to receiving provider or location electronically using certified technology. Although many practices are accustomed to providing patients and referring or consulting providers with a copy of relevant clinical information in past workflow processes, it was usually in paper form or in proprietary electronic formats. For example, images from a commercial device requiring a special image viewing software. Thus, this objective requires the additional task of generating the electronic clinical information or selecting the relevant information from the EHR so that the system can generate a standards-based data transmission. In addition, the workflow of selecting the information and generating the transmission is different than when done with copies of paper documents. Objective 6, 6 states that clinicians use clinically relevant information from CEHRT to identify patient-specific education resources and provide those resources to the patient. Educational resources or a topic area of resources are identified through logic built into certified EHR technology which evaluates information about the patient and suggests education resources that would be of value to the patient. Certified EHR technology is certified to use the patient's problem list, medication list, or laboratory test results to identify the patient-specific educational resources. The EP may use these elements or may use additional elements within CEHRT to identify educational resources specific to patients' needs. The EP can then provide these educational resources to patients in a useful format for the patient, such as electronic copy, printed copy, electronic link to source materials through a patient portal or PHR. For the next objective is number seven. Seven, the EP who receives a patient from another setting of care or provider of care or believes an encounter is relevant, performs medication reconciliation. The Joint Commission defines medication reconciliation as the process of comparing a patient's medication orders to all of the medications that the patient has been taking. The Joint Commission goes on to state that this reconciliation is done to avoid medication errors such as omissions, duplications, dosing errors, or drug interactions. Healthcare facilities are required to perform medication reconciliation already. Thus, it is not a new task to clinics. However, clinics previously used paper charts to maintain hard copy list and were not able to benefit from automation such as adding prescriptions from orders or from records received via a health information exchange, HIE. Process redesign surrounding medication reconciliation takes advantage of the automation that exists in CEHRT because the functionality assists providers and facility staff 
in maintaining and reconciling an up-to-date medication list. Provide patients online access to health information and the ability to view online, download, and transmit their health information within four business days of the information being available to the EP. The requirements include automating the release of health information to an online portal, including lab results and updates to medications and the problem list. Additionally, patients need the capability to download and transmit their health information. Most facilities have processes and forms that are used for a patient to request a copy of their health information. Prior to widespread use of EHRs and patient portals, patient health records were copied and provided in paper form to patients and providers. With certified EHR technology, patient health information can now be provided electronically. Thus, new workflow will need to be developed, possibly enabling patients to authenticate to an electronic system. For example, patients with a user ID and password to the patient portal for a practice, and electronically request and receive a copy of their health information. This new workflow will be most efficient for the practice if the practice can fill the request by electronically selecting information or whole encounters to be provided. Use secure electronic messaging to communicate with patients on relevant health information. Secure message is an electronic communication between a provider and patient that ensures only those parties can access the communication. This electronic message could be email or the electronic messaging function of a PHR, an online patient portal, or any other electronic means. Provider-initiated action and interactions with a patient-authorized representative are acceptable for meeting this measure. The EP is in active engagement with a public health agency to submit electronic public health data from CEHRT, except where prohibited and in accordance with applicable law and practice. The CEHRT provides many opportunities for capturing health data through clinician workflows involving patient care. This concludes Lecture D of Process Redesign. In this lecture, we reviewed Meaningful Use Modified Criteria, covering all 10 objectives required for eligible providers. At this point, you should be familiar with the Meaningful Use Table of Contents and how to access the specification sheets for each objective. In this lecture, we reviewed the possible workflow impacts of the eligible providers as they related to the objectives.